everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And I wish you all a happy new year. Here we are now in 2023. This is my first video of the year. I want to thank everybody who's been uh, who's joined my channel, who's been a member, or uh, been, been a follower, been a subscriber, and those of you who have uh, newly uh, joined me on the journey here. I'm speaking to you right now from my daughter's um, um, kitchenette. I'm visiting for a while and uh, doing a little baby daycare. So while the baby's asleep, I want to try and uh, rip off this video and do what a lot of uh, the photography YouTubers do, which is kind of look back over the last year, look at my uh, favorite images of the year. I won't necessarily say they're my best, but they're the ones that had some meaning for me for one reason or another. And I want to talk you through them, and then we'll talk um, a little bit about what I plan to do for the coming new year. So I, I really tried to winnow it down to try to make a relatively short video uh, wind up. Unfortunately, with, I won't say fortunately, I guess fortunately that I had 24 images that I'm really happy to, happy to, to, to share with you and talk about. But um, what I've done is kind of group them together by genre or by uh, what type of message they, they that they, what meaning they had to me and, and uh, what um, I gained from taking them and what I hope to take from them into the new year. So let me just go right into it. Uh, first few images are monochrome, and that's monochrome is something that I really haven't done a lot of. And uh, when I've shot monochrome, it's basically been for either the color didn't work or the composition was really about um, contrast and light as opposed to color. And this first image here is an example really of the first uh, situation because I took this in uh, early spring. And as you can see here, these are some buds. What you can't see is what the, what the colors were, which is basically the buds on this tree were bright red, the leaves were bright green, and that's a contrast that really is hard to work. So I tried to, actually what I wound up doing, as you can see, is I, I, I converted it to black and white and really worked on bringing out the details in the buds and, um, the, and the contrast there, and, and it really wound up giving, giving a really nice soft glow to the composition. I'm really, really, very happy with it. Next image here, this is a cascade I shot uh, actually not too far from here in the Washington DC area. And again, this is a case where actually I did a few things with this one. I really built up or built down the color and, uh, and luminosity of the rocks, contrasting that with the cascade itself. And actually this was a multiple image composition where the main cascade and the main image was shot in about eight tenths of a second. And the, but I also masked in some spray from an image taken at about 1 25th of a second because I wanted to try and capture the details in the water. And I thought that worked out pretty well when I, when I masked in a little bit of water detail onto the, the longer exposure. And as you can see, I also worked a lot on building up the contrast, really making a dramatic scene out of really what was kind of a mundane image because the rocks really weren't as dark as that. And it's just the color version just didn't work for me where the monochrome did. As see, I have a nice S shape here uh, going across. Now, this is a shot um, which is going to lead actually to another set of images. This I took this on, the, on, on one of the terraces of the Whitney Museum of Art in New York City. And, you know, I did, I did this was the first I'm going to show you of a series of architectural uh, uh, images. That's something I'm probably going to do a bit more later. Um, what I liked about this was just the simplicity of the, the con sim simplicity of the contrast between the uh, the uh, the tubular exhaust uh, ventilation pipes here and the straight wall. I wish I wish there had been a little bit more um, action in the sky. Of course, I had, we had a bluebird sky. I really can't control that. But I really just like the simplicity of the co of the composition and the, the contrast of straight lines versus rounded forms. Now, this is another shot from inside a museum. In this case, it was the uh, inside a museum. In this case, it was the Museum of uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art. And uh, this was in the hall, of, the hall, I guess, of antiquity. That's where they have a lot of uh, Greek and Roman stuff. And as you can see here, you have a skylight. You got um, very ornate uh, molding on the ceilings. And, uh, and then the skylight itself has these vertical walls. And I really love this. The blue here, the, 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 the shadows formed by the grating and um, the total symmetry. Symmetry is something I like a lot. It's one of those things that, according to the rule of thirds, whatever is, is supposed to be not kind of a no-no that you, you know, but I don't believe in rule. I believe in what I like. And what I like is symmetry in a lot of my compositions. And the fact that the, 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 the ceiling pattern is just slightly askew, just adds a little bit of dynamicism, uh, dyna, 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 if I can get the word out of my mouth. 
to the composition. Okay, again, the same day in the Metropolitan Museum, and this is in the, you know, one of the more modern art sections, and here you can see it's just a very minimalist uh, composition built on the rectangular shapes of the windows, the reflection of the windows, the light passing through the window, casting their own patterns on the floor. And if you look really closely, you know, you can see all kinds of fine details in the floor itself. You know, I was really happy with the amount of details I was able to capture in this shot. As you can see, there's, um, there's um, fine details in the wall, in the foliage outside. And I'm just really happy with this composition. All right, so next, this is in yet another um, art institute. Um, actually, I'm not going to name where it was simply because that photography inside was not really allowed. So I'm not. I'm really not going to say, say where this was. Although, if you happen to recognize it, uh, well, good for you. But what I really liked about this particular scene, as you can see, again, it's a very symmetrical composition. But the backside of the uh, of the wall here, and of course, now I've gone, you know, obviously into color here. But the backside of the wall here is uh, limited by uh, incandescent light, whereas the stairwell itself is limited by a, by a skylight, which is out of frame. So you have here natural light versus, uh, versus that is the incandescent, I meant the uh, fluorescent light. And so you can see the difference in color temperature between the, the back corridor and the, and, the, and the main stairwell. But I was, again, yeah, I was really, um, you can see the, the composition really based on lines and convergence and repetition of patterns. So again, I'm kind of like a, I like a minimalist uh, approach sometimes to uh, landscape and to um, architecture and the repetition of patterns and the contrasting of patterns is something that really appeals to me. Okay, now this is an image that did not vlog. Um, I didn't vlog the last one either. This is basically my son and I went to the Renaissance Fair in, uh, up, you know, in uh, the Catskills of New York and this guy is a glass blower. And basically I just really liked the expression on his face as uh, he's really into his uh, demonstration. And I just like the contrast of, uh, of the backlight here versus, and actually one of the things I really worked on a lot was, was um, bringing some color into the furnace, the kiln here, because you know, it looked almost white, white hot. So I guess I did add a little bit of golden glow to that. You know, but I just really liked um, the, uh, how he's really into his work. I don't do too many too many people shots, but this is one I really was very happy with. Now in May, I took a trip out to the Southwest, specifically to the uh, Scottsdale, Phoenix, Arizona uh, area. And this was a landscape that I um, actually had bracketed the shot, which happened just after sunrise, because as if you've never shot in the desert, I really hadn't much except for one other time four years earlier when I was in Sedona. But Desert light is really difficult to work with. It's very harsh, very contrasty, and actually shot a series of uh, five images uh, bracketed exposures with the intention of, 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 uh, of uh, blending them in Photoshop. But it turned out I didn't have to. This image was one I shot exposed for the sky, which was very, very bright as you can see. But I was able to bring back all the shadow detail from that image. So even though it was the darkest image overall, I was able to bring out all the shadow detail, bring, it, bring back all the color, uh, I really loved how the, the sun backlit this Palo Verde bush right here. How it brought out uh, details of the fringing uh, around the saguaro cactus, the, 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 the spines kind of almost made them glow a little bit. I also had a little bit of uh, desert glow here in the back over the Superstition Mountains from the dust that was in the area. So again, if, uh, this is one of the, the few l wider landscapes that I was able to take a little more on the epic side because I usually, where I live here in, in not here, but in uh, New York City area, don't really have access to really epic landscapes. And this is one I was very happy with. Same day, um, this is a little um, hedgehog cactus, I believe it is. And again, this is one where I exposed for the uh, the highlights, which in this case was the, the, the spines that were backlit and again, I didn't have to uh, uh, do an exposure blend at all. I simply just brought back the highlights, uh, brought back the shadows, I should say, in post. And was really very happy with the end result here. I'm not quite sure what kind of succulent plant this is on the, on the left side here, but I, the backlit cactus was something that I really uh, just caught my eye and I couldn't resist shooting it. 
All right, now this is one of my exercises going a little bit artsy fartsy, so to speak. This is a ICM image that I took more recently during a pink foliage in uh, the Hudson Valley uh, area of uh, New York. And basically, I, if you remember that video, this is one where I just kind of just jerked the camera like this, took a number of shots with various types of camera motions, um, exposure was about a quarter of a second. And this one I really liked because I had nice balance from left to right, from up to down. And you can still recognize, see that that it's trees and leaves because sometimes if the ICM is extreme, it's really hard to see exactly what it is. In this case, the subject is really recognizable. And I liked how it basically kind of almost looks like a like a like a like a Monet painting or a close up of Monet painting. If you're familiar with Monet, the great impressionist for the 19th century, that he built everything around color um, and around uh, movement and and the and the and the impact of light rather than form and this is really that's what this image is about it's about light rather than form light and color all right now this was in central park actually the same day i went to the museum because after i left the museum of um, metropolitan museum i walked through central park this image is uh, kind of interesting if i've had a lot of uh, questions about what exactly is going on here now you know this is as you obviously if you look at it you can see that it's obviously a reflection in water and what I did with this reflection is actually flipped it upside down. And I had the good fortune of having the shallow part of the water here, which is actually right in front of me. When it was upside down, those, those pebbles, that's also actually pebbles under the surface of the water. And once I flipped the image and darkened the, darkened the water, it looked like a night sky with stars. So this is, again, a little bit on the artsy fartsy side, but something I really had a lot of fun create, creating and um, really was happy with the result here. All right, now this is again uh, an earlier uh, visit to uh, my daughter's house. This is a uh, part of the uh, Great Falls National Park. This is not Great Falls itself. This is a kind of a side trip to hurry to the Potomac River. And, uh, you know, I, you know I, like to take, I like to shoot cascades. I like to shoot waterfalls. If you look really carefully, you'll see that this is not completely a natural waterfall because this straight wall here and this one here is what remains of what used to be a cement mill back in the early uh, 19th century and late 18th century when they when they used this area to you know for for mills the the, the rapid descent of the uh, elevation you know in this particular area caused as you can see a lot of water flow it was and it was used for you know grain mills cement mills etc so in this case I did both luminosity masking and exposure blending because the water was shot at about a half a second or so but because of a breeze that was moving the foliage around, I had a shot, I took another exposure at about, you know, 20th of a second or something and blended them in Photoshop. So uh, overall, you can see uh, you have a very dynamic uh, uh, image here. It's got the little uh, bit of foam kicking around over here, but I was really happy with this image. All right, now this is uh, one I took closer to home. It's um, uh, you know, basically a gnarly maple tree overhanging a branch in a park. And you have these uh, the maple flowers. Actually, this is actually the beginnings of seedlings here. But I really liked the contrast of the gnarly, gnarly tree branches against the uh, smooth water reflections, um, with some uh, water lilies floating on top. You know, really just a very colorful image, and a lot of strong dynamic lines formed by the tree branch. Now here we had. You know, this is going to be another uh, series of uh, woodland woodland images. And um, New York doesn't, at least no lower New York, doesn't get a lot of fog. And not too long ago, we had a very foggy day that the fog lasted all the way until the afternoon. So I was able to run out to um, this, actually Pelham Bay Park in the Bronx. Um, and I was able to capture a number of images you know, using the, uh, the strong backlighting because it was, even though there was fog, there, there was a good amount of sun above the fog. They brought enough light down to, down to uh, give some good backlighting to the leaves while also having a nice atmospheric uh, feel to the background. So again, from the same location, you can see a wider shot of the same the same areas here. I just love the colors. I love this, the atmospheric scene that I know the, uh, those of you who are shooting in the UK see this all the time, but for me, it's kind of a novelty. So I was very happy, happy with that. This image also shot the same day is also one of the first I shot with a brand new lens, my 14 to 35 F4 uh, uh, lens. And you can see the amount of detail that I was able to record from really close up all the way to the back. 
And this is another case of both exposure focus stacking and exposure blending because the water, um, my base exposure was about two seconds to really smooth out the water here. But because, but again, because of breeze moving the foliage, I shot another image of somewhere around 125, about 125th of a second and blended, and blended them in post. So I did that with that as well as, as well with this because the reeds were also moving, but the uh, fast exposure um, of, the, of the reeds and the trees froze those motions while the long exposure smoothed out the water. And really, I, love, I, I just love the detail that um, the lens provided. Okay, this is again a bit later in a different park, near the end, actually pretty much the end of the uh, autumn season. And uh, I was just captured by, captivated by how the uh, water that was just over you know, this flooded trail had turned some of these oak leaves blue and others um, you know, from maybe different species of oak, but anyway, uh, uh, others were golden. So I kind of walked along the trail to find one nice gold leaf that contrasted well with the blue ones in the water. So the water is just kind of rippling over the trail. And if you look really closely, you can see it. I'm trying to, I was trying to maximize the image, but it's not letting me. But in any case, um, I just really liked uh, the, 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 the contrast of the, of, the, of the golden leaf here, the blue ones here, the kind of russet ones that are inter, inter, intermixed, even some red over here. You know, it's just a nice, a nice set of patterns. All right, and now I'm gonna uh, go into a little bit of bird photography. This is some bird photography is something I used to do quite a lot of before I really got serious about the landscape. Uh, this is a, you know, and I, and I wind up doing, getting some of my favorite images in, uh, from birding. This is a pine uh, warbler. And what I really liked about this is the way that the bird kind of looked back at me. You can see he's, he's, he's a little bit above my head, but he's looking down like, what, uh, what are you about? And I was able to capture quite a lot of feather detail in this image. But it's the inquisitive pose and the and the and the, and the defocused background. Now, even with uh, my my um, seventy to no one hundred to five hundred lens and a one point four extender, so this is an f ten. But the background is further far enough away that it's really blurred out really well, and that helps make the bird stand out against the background. Okay, now this is on a different day because the last shot I shot in uh, midsummer. This one actually early spring, and this one is even earlier in spring in a different park. This is a ruby crowned kinglet, the smallest songbird in uh, North America. The only bird smaller than these are hummingbirds. And it was, I, was pretty, I was fortunate to be in a spot where I, where I noticed a lot of activity. There was a stream nearby. Um, the birds were, uh, were, were pretty active. And this kinglet is a bird that I haven't really photographed too often, actually only a couple of times. And I just liked the pose, the inquisitive look on his face. Again, being able to capture really good detail. Fortunately, one of the things I was able to do was be fairly close, and that's one of the cap and one of the keys to uh, wildlife photography, especially with birds, is to try and get as close to your subject as you can. But again, also have a fairly uncluttered background, which again, the uh, bushes that were behind it were just uh, were just far enough that even with the uh, f10 um, um, uh, aperture, that uh, it looks pretty well defocused. Okay, now this was from my desert trip in Arizona. This is in the Desert Botanical uh, Desert Botanical Garden in uh, Scottsdale, or Phoenix. The two towns are well, Scottsdale being a suburb of Phoenix, and I'm sure not sure exactly which one it was. But this is a white-winged dove. And one thing about birds in, in botanical gardens because they are very used to people, and the people usually are leaving them alone. So this bird built a nest in a in a tree that was only about 15 feet above the ground. So with my uh, 100 to 500, I don't think he even had an extender on this. I was able to get, you know, I, had, I did have to navigate around to find one spot where I had no, nothing blocking the bird. As you can see, uh, this, but they make me very flimsy little nests out of sticks. But I was able to get some really nice details here. You can see you got a little highlight in the eye, um, a lot of feather detail, and one thing I like about bird uh, photos is, is is some kind of uh, uh, activity or engagement with the viewer, like the one, like this warbler that, uh, that was looking at me. Or in this case, his behavior. 
In this case, the, the bird is brooding its nest. Uh-oh, my granddaughter's starting to wake up, so I'm going to have to wrap this up. Um, and it's getting near the end anyway. Uh, this is one of, one of my more recent ones of um, hooded mergansers. They were a good distance away. You couldn't really get very close, even with the uh, 700 meter, millimeters of total uh, total distance. But I really liked the reflections of this in the late afternoon of these. Actually, these were bare trees in the background that had, that, were, that that the late afternoon sun had cast yellow, and uh, when they reflected, they just made a nice environmental uh, scene. Just, so uh, atmosphere was something that's really atmosphere and mood. Are some some of the things that can really make a a, a, a wildlife image. Interesting. The birds are small, small there, but they kind of tell a little bit of a story of uh, the birds uh, as they're kind of like coasting around, probably getting ready to uh, settle down for the night. Got the male with his hood up and the cement with three females around it. And these last two images are from the next day, but the same park and the same lake and basically the same birds, these hooded mergansers. Um, I had to lie down on my belly right to next to the shore to uh, get, you know, fortunately, the birds were not too far away, but not as close as it looks. I did have to clap quite a bit, but even with the cropping, I was able to, the image quality is good enough that if you look here, you can see the serrated edges of the fit of the bill as the, in which the bill, which mergansers are diving ducks and they use their bills to catch fish underwater. This one um, has his hood flared up. You got another one, a male right next to it with his hood uh, down, but the focus is all on the, on the one bird here. And I really liked how the background again is kind of blown out, uh, defocused because because it's they're a good distance away. I mean, the background is a good distance away, so even at f10 with my with my extender on the on the lens, that gave me an expression an an aperture of f10, and that um, helped again separate the birds from the background. And I think I got one more again from the same location. Different bird, well, same species, but different bird. This one with his head down, but again, a lot of detail that I was able to capture and bring out. And even this, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, you, you know, bird photographers like to get these images with the reflection in the water. Obviously, the water was kind of turgid, a little bit wavy, so you couldn't get that. But that's something I actually liked is, is the activity in the water. You got a sense uh, that it was a little bit of a windy day, it was, um, you know, the birds kind of bobbing up and down. But, um, yeah, but it just gives a nice sense of atmosphere and, loca and location. You know, as the, as you can see that the ducks in here, this one had dipped, dived, dove recently. You can see that's why its feathers are wet because it had been underwater and it just had come up. So that is uh, the end. And I, you know, I, and I'm going to tell you something right now, which I probably should have mentioned earlier, that one of those photos was taken with a cell phone. Um, I'll give you a few minutes to figure out which one that was. If you're still here, still here this long, you know, drop a comment as to which one you think it was. But um, and I'll let you know if you're right. But um, this for this year, I'm looking forward to um, doing a little bit more traveling. Hopefully internationally, I'm thinking about possibly Canada, certainly somewhere else in the United States, and certainly while I'm here in the Maryland uh, D.C. area, I'm gonna, definitely going to be doing some shooting in the, around here while I'm in the area for the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, you know, I live in New York City and um, don't really do much street photography or urban photography or architecture, but I did like the results of, the, of a couple of times that I did get did uh, do that. So I'm probably going to try that some more. So if you have other any other thoughts about the things that might uh, might be good for me to try to shoot, uh, let me know in the comments. But basically, I want to really try and push myself. I want to try and you get even more um, uh, uh, improved with my use of Photoshop and processing. I probably I've always been a Lightroom Lightroom user, but in the last year or two, I've been uh, working more and more with Photoshop and really finding the possibilities of, um, of processing, both not, not just landscapes, but also even with the wildlife and such. So that's something else I'm going to be working on is building up my, my skills. That's something that I encourage everybody out there is to work on building up your skills also and really challenge yourself photographically. So thanks for staying this long. It's a bit longer than I, than I really expected it was going to be, but and now I'm, you know, my baby granddaughter's about to wake up so i'm gonna have to go take care of her in a few minutes but thanks for being this thanks for being here um thanks for coming you know if you liked what you've seen and you want to see more please make sure you hit that hit the subscription subscription button if you're not subscribed already give me a notification bell uh -huh. give me a comment and hit that notification bell it's going to be right down there so that the next time i upload you'll be able to see it right away thanks and i'll see you next time
Bye now.